Hello fellow adventurers and collectors, Vamala here. On today's episode we're going to be diving deeper into Monster High. Now, I did not expect it to expand as much as it did already, but I seem to have gotten a lot of good deals recently, so I've picked up a couple more Monster High figures and I figured I'd go over them and showcase them here and kind of explain my uh, investigation towards this line, or at least what I've learned in the past a few weeks of me buying these figures. So for starters, here we have Cleo Denial, and something that I've been learning about, you know, the doll hobby in general is that there's running changes or different variations, so this happens to be a Saran variant. Now Saran is a type of uh, synthetic fiber that is used for the hair, and it seems to be of higher quality than the typical po uh, poly that they come with, or nylon, I believe. I think the tier list is Saran, nylon, and then poly but don't quote me on that this is just a learning process and of course another one that i picked up was abby abominable and uh i've kind of put some random clothes that i had lying around on her so uh learning about these figures learning about the line and the hobby in general has been interesting you know learning the different hair types and what have you how their hobby is different than ours in some ways and similar in others so it's been a fun process, to say the least, but overall, these are very cool figures. I do like the designs of them. The body types are very unique. One thing I will say is that I wish the bodies were a bit sturdier. They seem to be a little bit floppy, but yeah. I unfortunately didn't just stop there. I ended up getting this three-pack as well, which is probably the newest release that I've ever gotten because everything else that I collect seems to be scalped to high heaven, so... It's actually nice to get something, you know, as it comes out. Of course, I did pay a little bit extra because I bought it online, and it seems like this is probably going to be an online ex uh, exclusive, but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, it seems like the doll hobby f faces a lot of the same problems that uh, the action figure community does as well when it comes to, like, retailers not wanting to store these larger items, so they just leave it to the wolves, to so to speak, so... Things like this unfortunately become online exclusives, which kind of sucks. So, but at the same time, my own, you know, hunting in Walmart and Target, I've have I have seen a lot of do uh, larger doll-related items. So I'm kind of curious as to how that works out in terms of like what things make the cut and what doesn't. So my entire time, you know, working with these uh, dolls and everything has got me thinking like what can we learn from them in the sense that if we were to bring back G.I. Joe or let's say a 12 inch figure overall I think there is a way to do it and looking at the doll community kind of will give us insights on how we can do that you know they have a budget line that gives you an entryway into the doll uh, line what have you whether that be Monster High or Barbie or, or anything that you're collecting so if we were to you know take what we learn from the doll community i think that's the way we got to look at it in terms of making sure it's available for everyone at all budget levels and then of course making sure that it's of quality uh something like i mentioned before is that there's running variants and changes in these dolls because there's so many uh dolls being made they're produced in different countries so that also includes different quality assurances in terms of where that doll is coming from so it's interesting to see so Something I did learn as well is that there's like very vari uh, variants that are released overseas that you don't see here. So I'm curious as to how that works out as well. But again, going into like what I've been kind of thinking about as I've been, you know, kind of going over these new newer figures is that I wish that we can do this for the action figure side of things instead of getting those shampoo bottle figures, the ones that are chintzy and kind of like very hollow. So. That's not to say that these figures are perfect. Their heads are, you know, various varying levels of, like, hardness, I guess, is the right way to say it. And that's dependent on where it's coming from as well. But that's also good and bad in terms of if you want to re reroot the hair. But that's a different conversation. And I do apologize if I'm not really talking about the, the dolls overall. But uh, I figured there's going to be other channels that go over them in more in depth. But... So I will some make a remark in that I did not keep this Torlai. As much as I, you know, care about the design, I didn't think it would fit with the other two girls. So I ended up moving her along, and I'm waiting for the Fear Book release to get 
uh, into my store because I think that will be a better look for her and I do like the shorter cut for her but uh, I mainly got this for, for Persephone and then I'll touch base on that when she shows up but I do again apologize that I'm not going over everything here I figured it'd be interesting to discuss the my journey with it so far and how I've seen things so again I do apologize for those who are more interested in uh, talking about the dolls here but that's what you get here on my channel if you're new here unfortunately but uh yeah uh it's very interesting I, again you know I keep reiterating that it's the same and different at the same time because watching some of the other content creators talk about these dolls and the problems that they face it kind of echoes with what we face in the action figure community as well so something that I wanted to touch on as well is that if we were to basically take this concept from the doll community and kind of put it towards an action figure line is that these are retailing at around $25 right and the basic or uh, budget entry level ones are going to be around $17 $16 I believe so hypothetically if you're putting that towards an action figure correlation I think it can be done while maintaining this level of quality and Granted, this is also with the fact that these uh, dolls have different body types depending on the characters. So you have some that are shorter, some that are taller, but they're still able to maintain that price. Now, it's a uh, balancing act in that some things are levied over you know, the quality of the figure. So for example, I mentioned that Saran hair is more desirable, but not every doll comes with it because of the limitation of the synthetic fiber itself but also the cost of uh, Saran compared to Polly or what have you. So I think if someone were to actually apply this concept to the action figure line, to a action figure line, I think it can be done. It's just a matter of coming up with an idea and executing on that idea with the best quality in mind because at the end of the day, the quality of the figure really dictates how long lasting it'll be because I see those shampoo bottles all the time and Again, it's a matter of where the desired market's going to be. Yes, those figures have their place because there's kids or parents who are just willing to buy anything for their kid and don't necessarily care about the quality. But if we're looking to actually nurture the next generation of collectors, I think we want to give them something a little bit more uh, substantial outside of, you know, a shampoo bottle figure. So, yeah, I've been learning a lot about this hobby adjacent to ours and it's been fascinating because if there's one thing about me is that once I get into something I you know will deep, uh, dive deep into it whether that be the lore or the history behind it and it's been fun so with that said I apologize again if I didn't really touch base on the you know figures here Persephone is the one that I was mainly looking forward, uh, forward to which is the one with the purple shirt and uh, yeah, it's been fascinating and fun to actually get into something new. You know, I've had a passing interest in these figures, so it's also nice to learn about the different side of collecting that not necessarily everyone's attuned to. So yeah, with that said, I thank you all for watching. And if you feel so inclined, please like, comment, and subscribe. I very much appreciate it. I'll catch you all next time.